गुड मॉर्निंग यस फाइन सो इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी टच अपॉन सम ऑफ द एडवांस्ड फीचर्स ऑफ शेल प्रोग्रामिंग वेर इन वी लुकड एट एक्सपोर्ट कम वी लुकड एट एवॉल वी लुकड एट how we can exec that means use exec to come out of a shell or log out a shell once a command is executed we also looked at various shell functions how they can be and we importantly looked at command which is a conditional parameter substitution right so now with that we have last topic of that particular shell programming which is called as a merging the streams okay so merging the streams is just a notion but we can keep at this point of time so merging a stream is not, you know the streams right we have io stream one is a standard input one is a standard output other one is standard error and standard input can be three ways standard output also can be three ways similarly standard error also can be taken in three ways coming to standard input those three ways can be through a keyboard or input device later it can be through a file or it can be through a command for each of them we have a separate notation if you are taking something from a file we use the left chevron operator which is a less than operator if you are using through a another command we use a pipe symbol we also discussed in length when to use pipe when we cannot use pipe right similarly we have standard output where we can also do the same three things that is a standard output device maybe a terminal next we have a file that is a right chevron operator that is a greater than operator and if it is a command it's again from the pipe symbol in coming to the error it is pretty same as output where the error will be shown or sent to the stream that is basically to the terminal or we can have the same error being directed to the file using the again the same operator called a right chevron operator and also we can share that to a another command if at all like normally we do not do that but in case required that is all. but what is the difference we have to see here is we have a standard output standard error both will be using the similar pattern meaning if at all you want to redirect the standard output or a standard error to a another file we use the right chevron operator there might be some confusion right for the purpose we have a 012 that is called as a descriptor the file descriptor 0 for a standard input 1 for a standard output and 2 for a standard error so this is what we have discussed as part of the standard io or a io redirection so coming to the concept of merging the streams in since both output as well as error are having the similar features as far as the streams are concerned stream is nothing but a, a continuous flow of data that is not, that's what you might have seen in networks as well a stream of data is what we are looking at or the continuous uh, set of data is what a, a stream is all about okay whether it is input or output or error it is basically a combination of a data or a group of characters but they will be coming in a one particular direction or maybe at one particular point of time thereby we consider it as a stream otherwise they mean the same what we know as per the input output and error are concerned and now the concept is merging the streams merging the streams means we have a standard output and standard error sometimes whatever output we are getting or error is coming is shown on the terminal is there any way where we can merge these two that's what the concept here is so merging of these two is possible why because they have the similar way of representing that is the terminal by default or a file with the greater than symbol or a pipe for i mean directing the output to some other place if that is the case there is a possibility we can merge these two streams so we have the concept called as ampersand symbol using which we can start merging so let me show that example how we can merge this let me go to the unix prompt now so suppose i want to print a message echo this is a message i want to give so what happens now whatever the message that is coming that is coming to the terminal this is one way second 
I can redirect to a file hi.txt. Now it will be shown on the not on the terminal, right? So we will be having only terminal there. Sorry, the file there, not the terminal. Hope the screen is visible now. The unique. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, please. Go ahead. Yes, done. Now I will not be showing the data on the screen, but I will be having the file. Let me see whether the file is existing with the name hi.txt. See, this is what happened. This is what we have done as a Hi, where are you? I will take the another text here. So I just want to demonstrate what a merge. So we want to merge an error and output stream. Of course, there is no error in this, but how we can do, let us see now. So we have one, one stands for a standard output. Greater than symbol will be used for redirection of either output or error. Now, this is what actually we talk about as a standard output redirection. Now I want to merge this. So I want to merge with whom? Two. What is two? Two is an error. To indicate this, we are merging. I'm going to add an ampersand. That's all I'm going to do. This is a concept of a merging two streams. What is going to happen? Whatever the data that is coming here as a standard output because of this, and any error that might generate from this, both are merged together and shown on the screen. That's the concept here. Anyhow, there is no uh, error in this. That's why reason you'll get the same output here because there is no error being generated here. Probably if you can write some complex type of a uh, what you call a command here where error is also generated, where output is also possible, probably you can merge these two and showcase on the screen. But whatever it is, the concept is this merging both standard output. How do you say it is standard output? Because we know zero for a what you call uh, standard input, one for the standard output and two for the standard error. In fact, I can write this like this also, because as I told earlier, one you may write, you may skip also. If you don't write one, it's fine. But if you're dealing with the error, you should be always two. We cannot omit this. So this also is okay for me. I can execute this. I can still get my answer or solution. So both the concepts are same. But to be precise, better to use this to avoid confusion. So one is a standard output, two is a standard error, and we are merging using the ampersand. So what is the advantage of this now? We are going to merge two similar streams. Why? We are not considering input here, because input stream is a totally different, less than operator. We are working only on the right side, that is the right Chavran operator, where we can merge both output as well as error. How do we do that? By using the ampersand operator. What is the advantage? The advantage here is in case you want to capture both the output as well as error and store somewhere, maybe on the file or maybe on the terminal or maybe for some other purpose, probably we can do this. So that's what the advantage of merging of streams concept. This is what we know as far as the merging is concerned. Otherwise, nothing to worry about this, but wherever there is a requirement, we can do this. So ampersand is the one which is going to merge two streams. What are, the, what are those streams? One is a standard output, other one is a standard error. How to specify? Standard output is number one, standard error is number two. Right? So an operator is what, which is going to identify that we are working on a standard error or standard output. So that's the concept here. So this concludes our advanced shell programming. So any doubts on this merging streams, which is the last topic of our advanced shell programming. No, sir. Right. Shall we move to ARC now, AWK, the other one, which is the important, we have been writing programs as well, and that is what the last topic for module five, right? So let us get into books. Yeah, please. Any doubts? No, sir. Fine. Yeah. I will stop the screen here now. I will come back to another presentation. Probably I will share these notes with you as well. Hope this is visible now.
Yes, sir. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Fine. So A W K. So A W K, as we have seen in the lab as well, it is a filter. Before we come to A W K, let me touch upon some filters as well. So we have seen some of the filters earlier. A filter is a command in Unix. A filter is a command in Unix, which takes both standard input and provides standard output. Such commands we call them as a filter. Yes, as we know, we have categorized commands into four branches. One which takes standard input but never gives a standard output, which never takes standard input gives standard output. And last category, no input. The category we are talking today as a filters are concerned is the one which takes standard input and also provides the standard output. Those commands we call them as a filters. And if it is a filter, I can freely use them anywhere within the pipe or outside the pipe because a pipe has to have some commands which are going to be giving standard output to its left side and those commands Pardon, yeah sir voice is not coming properly yes raman sir voice is not coming properly sir an yes, issue yes sir there is a break yes, in Raman, your Sir, your voice is not coming properly, sir. It is uh, stopping in between. Yes, sir. Yes. Is the same with all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, now, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible now? Clear? And now still breaking, sir. Sir, it's still breaking. Sir. breaking. The voice is breaking. Yeah, yeah. I will go slow. Yeah, please. You can interrupt me if things are not going properly. So no issue. Yeah. Now. So are those commands which take standard input. One second, let me connect the internet. One second. One second. I switch to LAN connection. Let me see. Now it's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So fine. Anyhow, if you have a still issue, please remind me. I will try to figure it out. Okay. Meanwhile, now we have been talking about filters. So filters are those commands which take standard input and which provide standard output. And said is one command we have seen earlier as part of one of the program where we have replaced a date of a calendar with a star or two stars which is a filter again and all these filters have multiple purposes and they are very handy for the programmer and like that we have a grep which we have used in almost all the scripts grep command which is also a, a filter like that today we are going to look at a, another filter which can be used as a, not only as a command, but also as a, a programming tool, which is AWK. As we know, AWK is the name derived after or from the first letters of these inventors. There are three inventors who invented this particular or who discovered this arc, which is AWK. One is 
aho a h o aho is a one of the creator probably you can see here aho is a scientist is a mathematician his first letter is a then weinberger which is a w here then we have a kernigan our great man of c language which is k so a w k is nothing but the first letters of three gentlemen who derived or who designed this particular command or a programming construct called a w k that is how it is named okay and it is continuation to the filters what you have seen that is as far as the grep said even though they are not in syllabus but that's just we have used them in our programming but they also help the user or maybe the programmer in a great way that's the concept with which we have started this awk right so awk belongs to the category of filters and it is also called as advanced filter simply because it does more more than what acd does or more than what grep does and also it has a capability of making itself or promoting itself into a, a programming level construct that is the reason why awk is called as a, an advanced filter okay so the main purpose of this programming is i mean this awk is we can use that either at the command level as a command or we can convert the given script or a set of characters or a set of constructs into a, a programming that's what we have seen in the program 10 and 11 where we have written awk program or a script if you look at the criteria or if you look at the syntax of awk awk comes with a, a special syntax similar to find or similar to a cd where we have a awk followed by options options we have seen earlier in the program but anyhow we can touch upon them as well here and the selection criteria followed by file name so the selection criteria has two things one is a criteria along with the action if you look at that both selection criteria and action are kept in the single quotes that's important here so first one is option second is single quotes which contains criteria as well as action so how do we differentiate so selection criteria is within that single quotes whereas action is kept within the braces and followed by a file which we are going to use in order to have this activity being done so that's the concept of a or you can say the structure of a awk so awk followed by options followed by within single quotes criteria which you want to use so action within braces later we have a file name right this is the structure of a wk okay let us take a small example so this is an example to understand what a wk is all about assume i have a file by name emp.txt so we know we have seen in the lab as well whenever we use a wk we take a file whether it is a date program whether it is a employee program whether it is a book program or a library pro program we have taken a, a file right and that is how it is going to work why you can appreciate now because syntax itself says we require a file to be used as far as the awk is concerned without that we will not be able to do or we have to provide a, a standard input data that is provide data at the prompt itself or a keyboard itself so but it is better to go with the file because it is always to have better to have a, a proper structure okay so coming back to that assume there is a emp.txt which is pretty same as your 11b program where you have a name of the employee what is the basic salary what is the designation what is the date of joining all those stuff is there assume if that is the case probably how do i filter how do because we know awk is a filter right i can take some data how do i filter out only those people who are at managerial level assume manager is in the third column third column or a third field is a designation which talks about the manager production manager engineer chief manager like that so there are some designation but i want to pick only manager so whenever you want to search for the criteria the criteria can be your wild cards the criteria can be your regular expression the criteria can be your patterns anything we can use so whenever you are using a pattern 
even if you remember we have used in a cd we have used slash right slash star slash slash double star slash so pattern searching always comes with a slash that's how any filter whether it is grep or scd or awk will be functioning even in vi if you have worked out there is a pattern searching which is completely based on a slash so since we are using in the first example a pattern what is a pattern i want to search for those here i am searching based on a character wherever there is a m a n a g e r i want to print suppose i have a manager production manager supervisor chief manager tell me how many managers are existing when i search for this there is a manager right there is one more called production manager other one called as a chief manager so when i give this particular instruction all those people who has manager as a designation can it be simple manager can it be deputy manager assistant manager chief manager production manager sales manager let it be anything but there is a manager if that is the case this particular awk command is going to filter all those people whose designation contains manager need not be manager alone it can be chief manager production manager stuff like that let us take an example and see how this works okay so let us come back to the prompt now i will stop this one here now so let us come to the prompt so let me create emp.txt i will go to a window where we have our programming yes so now i am going to create emp.txt so first name i'll give some name tab i'll give basic salary i'll give designation and i will give their place similarly i give another name i will give basic salary i will give another designation i will give some name i will give some other name I'll give one more. Let me take one more now. I'll give. Let me take another designation. Sales. So this is how I have given. So to be precise, probably I can give one more tab because. let us have a proper data here so this is how the data is created now so four columns have created with four rows where the data is name basic salary designation and the area where they work let me save this and come back to prompt so now awk what is option right now there is no option we are straight away going now single quotes within that what is the criteria slash manager slash what you want to do we want to print what to print i want to take the data which is p r i n t i will close this now single quotes now what is the file emp dot txt okay so we have given awk we give the selection criteria selection criteria i want to search for manager then what is the action i want to do i want to print so from which file emp.txt okay open to the output the 
just there. One second. Fine. A W K. Let me use. Sir, that is hyphen small f, no sir. Where ma? No. This is for your file. This is for field. We are using field, no? What is there here? Wk emp emp file is there. One second. Yes. I don't know what is going wrong here. Sir, hyphen F should be capital. A is small, sir. No, no, that is for your uh, normal file. This is a uh, field, no? We are looking at field. Let me give default also. Okay, something is coming. Yes. Yeah, normally, if you look at the default, actually, as a delimiter is a space. Like your any Unix command, even opt takes default delimiter as a single space or a group of spaces, which is a tab. Normally, we need not specify that, but somehow this particular thing is expected because default itself is a, a tab. Or a group of spaces. Normally, we do not specify that unless we use something different delimiter. But anyhow, it is working now with respect to taking the quotes, which is a default. So we are having a default uh, delimiter in the file. If you look at emp.txt, we have created the name followed by a tab, followed by the designation in basic salary, followed by the designation, followed by the position. But everywhere, each field was separated. The delimiter called a tab or more than one tab. 
that is fine but tab is what we are going to use That's what we are going to specify the capital f here is an option which stands for a field because each line or each field in the emp.txt is identified as a field with a delimiter called a tab that's what you noted here this is the selection criteria and print if you look at that the selection criteria is i want to search for post designation is manager m a n a g e r so what is kept within this slash is nothing but the pattern which i am going to search and later there is a action part which is kept in the braces what i want to do i want to print only dollar 3 so let me do something else so i will give manager please observe here instead of capital m i will give small m do you know why the output is not coming now because the patterns are case sensitive if you open and see your manager file the txt the manager is a capital here also manager is capital let me make one manager as a small letter now so i made one manager as a small this have made it as states so let me give this now let us see what we get now here okay. so you can see the output there is a change so that means it is a case sensitive we should be careful so all patterns are always case sensitive irrespective of it is a unix command or a shell or a okay. so that we have been observing and here too it is same now second change what you can do here is i've given a manager now now instead of print dollar 3 i want to print names of those people as well so i will change this into dollar 1 comma dollar 3 so what will happen to the output now not only dollar 1 that is first column even third column will be printed what is the first column the names third column is the designation see so first name followed by the designation second name followed by designation okay what is identified is being given that's what we mean so here what we have to observe here is hyphen f is an option be careful it is a capital f here in this case because it is a field so small f what you have used is for a file the capital f is for a field and followed by the field delimiter in your case it is a tab followed by the criteria which is a pattern here and the and action i have used dollar 1 dollar 3 what you have to observe here is whenever there is a file which is given as input file for a awk each data is being used each data is being used as far as the line is concerned it is called as a dollar 0 complete line is called a dollar 0 in one program we have used this dollar 0 if you remember in the books program we have used dollar 0 meaning that entire line will be considered if it is dollar 1 it is a column first field dollar 2 second field dollar 3 field dollar 4 fourth field so dollar 0 stands for entire line dollar 1 dollar 2 dollar 3 dollar 4 we can write any numbers they stand for the corresponding field from left to right so in this file if i say dollar 1 it is the first column dollar 2 second column dollar 3 third column and dollar 4 fourth column that's what it is going to happen so that's why the uh, fields are been identified dollar 1 dollar 2 dollar 3 dollar so that's what the identification is right so that's how awk is being used initially to understand what it is okay go back to the prompt sir yes so if we want to print uh, say five uh, fields from Order. one to last so if we uh -huh. want to print uh, from uh, name to direct to salaries and all all we have to print we can I'll use give, hyphen sir i will give dollar 0 if i give dollar it will print all you want to print entire line no yes sir for specific uh, for specific name i have to print entire line so you just see this this is what i 
expecting i am searching for manager where matching it gives entire line is this what you are looking for yes yes sir ah okay that's what i said dollar 0 means entire line dollar 1 dollar 2 dollar 3 for the fields you can specify like this right excuse me sir yes please sir uh, some of my friends are uh, finding difficulty to join this meeting sir why uh, is it uh, happening in the time like, uh, it from that time sir they are finding difficulty no there are they 57 have, students yeah. there are 57 students uh, nobody is letting you in somewhat like the um, error message is showing yes, no, no, now as we speak there are 57 students who are already there i have been admitting whoever have been jo joining now i think 57 are there ha ah, okay sir yes sir okay 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 fine what were we discussing one second yes so we have seen a file which is having a delimiter as a tab now right now let us change this to a another delimiter so probably i will come back to this program i will use pipe pipe as a delimiter so i will use pipe as a delimiter now accordingly i can change my program only delimiter will change nothing else so i have used delimiter now pipe that means you have to specify what delimiter you want if you specify that accordingly we have to change in the program as well now let me look at this so this is what my file now i have modified now let me see how my program works for this now okay i will give the same i have changed the internal file but i am not changing the command here let me see what happens so what is happening here i have given hyphen f delimiter is a space but what delimiter i am using there pipe right but it is still giving dollar 0 that is a complete line being printed here so it is not considering whatever the data we are giving it is taking only space now now i will change this now i will put pipe in between and i will give pipe as a delimiter now let us see what is output we are getting now so we are getting an output which is similar to that that is whatever the delimiter we have used as a space which is a default is also being considered for this purpose now which we need to be careful because what we need to get should be based on the delimiter so delimiter is given as a pipe that's why i am getting proper output but if delimiter is changed to space or something else probably we may get we may not get, but that is not correct right so let me check what is happening here so dollar 1 dollar 2 i will write pipe now hope you can observe the difference between the previous and the current one here we have used default delimiter as a space i am getting something different output but when i use a proper delimiter which is a pipe i'm getting a proper output so you may be fooled by the system that 
by using default you may get some output but it may not happen always so it is a responsibility of the programmer to use proper delimiter for a a proper output so that's what the difference i want to showcase now so be careful so when you are using a default parameter then default uh, delimiter it's fine but if you are using something else then you should be careful you have to specify that properly so that's what the difference you can see in these two outputs both look similar in the previous case we got output right whether i have used default or whether i have used pipe i got the same output but that may not happen always to exam the example for that is this particular one so it is our responsibility to make sure that the delimiter what we have is properly used if you do not use probably will get a some weird output as we are getting now so that should not be the case because it takes in a different format so delimiters are very important that's why it is a hyphen f which is going to make sure that the delimiter is properly used so this is how we can split a given line into multiple fields so when you split a given line into multiple fields probably i will be able to get a, an output of this category so by default the action is a print action which we can look for okay so that's what it is now and second point any doubts on this this is just basic arc command you just identified what arc is and every time whenever you talk about arc an input file is mandatory that's what i advised many of you who came for signature for records without a input file you cannot talk about a arc so you should mandatorily write a input file even in the examination if it is a question comes on this you should first mention the input file later you should be able to write the program that gives more clarity and even for you there will be no confusion right so we have to write the input file so first create a input file with whatever the delimiter you want you want de default delimiter you can use space or tab or you want your own specific delimiter you can use pipe or whatever you want so but we have to use some delimiter and that delimiter need to be used properly when the command of this category is being used that's what the concept we have seen now okay so it is a basic now and what you have seen also here is we can divide the given line into fields based on dollar 1 dollar 2 dollar 3 or we want to print a complete line you can use dollar 0 that's the concept what we have seen as of now as far as the arc is concerned okay next important thing is print and printf so we have actions here print action and printf action so print is mainly for just printing whatever it is whereas a printf is similar to your c or c programming language where we can use formatting of your output for example you have seen in the program as well you want to display a name in a left justification right justification or each name should have a, a proper length like say 20 characters 30 characters probably all the specifications we can write so print is simply printing whereas a printf is mainly for formatting what we are going to print in the sense i want to print with uh, uh, five digits i want to print with six digits and stuff like let us see how we can write this particular command so printf we have to spe specify now what we want to do so dollar one is the name so i can say percentage yes and dollar two is basic salary i can say percentage d So percentage S is a string, I can say 20 characters. And if I use hyphen here, it means it's left justification. And I can do all those things now. Okay. So let me try. What is the output you will be getting for this now? See, you can see now. Okay, let me give entry key because this is important. Slash N. See, now you can see the output is the difference between the previous output and current output so what is the previous output it justly just printed whatever the names we have like this but now you can see there is a difference this print is taken to next level what is this because we have given 20 characters suppose if i give 40 characters it may take some other level it may be further distance you can observe that so i am giving the space the name is going to have 40 characters where the percentage d let me give some 
value for this as well so let us say um, some 6.2 so let me give okay float probably i'll just make it as a float see you can see i have given rupee as well as a paisa so if i want to print like this i can format so printf is basically how i can format my output so if you want to give justification we can give let me remove the justification now that is a left justification i have removed now you can see where the data is coming girija was left justified now mohan was left justified but i have removed the minus they are all central justified so like this we can format the print the data the way we want okay that's what the idea behind particular printf statement so print and printf for both action print will simply print without doing any much output activity there is a printf we can format the what you want to print so that's basically about what print and printf stands for so any doubts on this fine no, sir. Yeah. let me come back to no, the discussion i will present so like this we can use whatever the data we want we can use a pattern we can use a regular expression we can use wild cards depending upon the type so we are doing uh, the content so wild cards cannot be the right mechanism so any pattern with a regular expression is what we can use here so print is mainly for printing as it is but the printf can be formatted this is basically about what an arc initially now next important what are the built in variables in arc this is very very important if you look at a question paper every question paper you will get any question on this for 4 to 5 marks discuss built in variables in arc we have used in the first program probably in 10a where we have used fs so fs is nothing but a field separator we have used for dd mm yy hyphen as a field separator so that is fs so fs is nothing but a one of the variable which is a built in variable like that we have these five six built in variables let us understand today what they are probably we can continue in the next class with some examples so nr nr stands for the line number line number how many lines we want suppose there is a database of 60 students i want to know only line number 10 to 20 not all 60 then probably i can give nr is equal to 10 up to nr is equal to 20 so between line number 10 and line number 20 i can read the data if that is the case probably i can use nr okay next fs we know that is a field separator ofs is for a output field separator that we want to give and nf number of fields suppose you have written a database file where there are six fields if you want to take some action if the fields are not six suppose if there are only three fields are there then probably you want to signify or inform the system that look there are only three fields but there should be six fields in fact so you are not written so number of fields you want to use as a, a condition probably you can use nf nf stands for a number of fields or for given particular data next file name we want to act on a particular file name is what we can do that is f i l e n a m e name of the input file that we are supplying to the arc then arc c arc v are same as your command line arguments that we have used in c or i mean c language or a c++ language for a main function i think we have discussed this while talking about command positional parameters at that time also we have seen but otherwise arc c arc v arc c stands for the argument count arc v stands for the actual arguments that have been there in the command prod that is the idea behind so nr number of lines or the line number fs input field separator ofs output field separator nf number of fields in a given line or a given text and file name for the input file name that we have and argc argv stand for the at the same level of what we have used in c or c++ main which is argc for the number of arguments that is the count of arguments and argv the actual arguments that we have for the given 
line or a, a given command line. That is the idea behind the built-in variables, which is very important from exam point of view. If you look at the example for NR, let us say, I want to print this line number three to line number six. This is an operator, equal operator. We'll see, see the operator soon. But right now to understand what NR is, I want to print between line number three to line number six. I can specify like this. So in a given file, only line number three to six will be printed as we have seen just now. Similarly, if you want to use delimiter, default is, we know that default delimiter is a field separator is nothing but tab or a continuous spaces or multiple tabs. But you are going using something then probably in the program, if you write, you can use this as a field separator. So what we used F is for the command. What you're using FS is for the script what we are going to write. So don't get confused now. F is for the command at the prompt. If you are, we know that arc is for both, right? It is using, it is, it can act as a command as well as a programming construct. If you are using arc as a command, it is a capital F. If you are using it as a command for a particular program that is a construct, probably it is a FS. All these built-in variables are meant for mainly for programs as well, not only for command, but also for the programs. So thereby, this FS is for the program, not for the uh, command at the prompt level. So this is what it is going to be. So FS hyphen, sorry, the whatever the pipe we have used here. Similarly, we have arg C and arg V. You want to check whether I have entered three arguments, whether I have entered four arguments. I can check if arg C is equal to three or if arg C is equal to five. Based on that, I can take action. Or if number of fields is equal to three, do this. Else, do something else. Like that, we can use all those variables what we have listed here. NR, FS, YFS, NFS, all those. Ready on the Similarly, OFS, that is output field separator. While printing output, you want to have some, some other thing? We can write this. This we can use in the print. Some of you are on un unmute, please mute yourself. Then NF has a tool. If number of fields is equal to five, do this. If number of fields is not equal to five, do that. So I can check this. So NF. Similarly, file name. So if I, I want to print the file name, I can use, this is a variable, of course. So you can use variable as we use in any other program. Similarly, arg C and arg V. If the count of argument is equal to five, I want to do this. Otherwise, I want to do something else. Like that, we can use all these things into a particular program, which is a arc script, okay? This is what we have seen already, splitting a file into fields. This is what example we have considered. We have taken a database now for a employee an employee name designation and we have just identified how it works this is how the concept we have seen so this example we have already seen with respect to a arc basic file using print as well as printf and printf is mainly for formatting your printf like this i can format my printf we have seen that as well now right Next, probably we look into these operators maybe in the next class. Okay, maybe in a couple of classes, probably we should be able to wind up arc. Time permits, let us understand and learn something which is not in syllabus but very important from Unix point of view. That is our next next focus. Once we are done with the syllabus, let us see how we can do that. So for today, we'll stop at this point. From next class, probably we can start from the operators and the various functions that we can use in the arc programming or arc scripting okay so with this let me stop here now we'll go with the attendance if i have any doubts let me know we have our attendance anaga Abhilash? Yes, sir. Akil? Yes, sir. Apro? Mic off, mic off. Anusha? Yes, 
वेंकराज प्रेजेंट सर भानु प्रकाश यस सर भार्गव यस सर रहमतुल्ला प्रेजेंट सर जय प्रेजेंट सर वंदना प्रेजेंट सर चरण दर्शन दीक्षा दक्षायणी हर्षित हेमलता प्रेजेंट सर ह्यूमा प्रेजेंट सर जयंत प्रेजेंट सर दिव्या यस सर कौशिक लक्ष्मी प्रेजेंट सर लावण्य प्रेजेंट सर मनीष प्रेजेंट सर मनोज सर कौशिक प्रेजेंट सर प्रेजेंट सर यस यस सर गिवन कौशिक मोहित नवल यस सर प्रेजेंट सर पवन पूजा प्रेजेंट सर पूर्णिमा प्रेजेंट सर रमन यस सर रश्मि यस सर रूपक यस सर साई कुमार समीर प्रेजेंट सर सर साई कुमार यस प्रेजेंट प्रेजेंट सर यस साई कुमार गिवन यस शदाब प्रेजेंट सर शरण शशांक यस सर शीतल प्रेजेंट सर शिवानी प्रेजेंट सर रमिया प्रेजेंट सर विष्णु प्रेजेंट सर सुगंधिनी प्रेजेंट सर सुषमा प्रेजेंट सर सुष्मिता प्रेजेंट सर सुष्मिता यू प्रेजेंट सर तीर्था प्रेजेंट सर रुप्ति प्रेजेंट सर वर्षा प्रेजेंट सर वीना प्रेजेंट सर 